Hello again and welcome back. So we're going to pick up with the same data that we've been working with in the past few videos, our uh, sample data XML file over here. Now, unlike the past two videos in which we explored how to change the node size and change the node color so that we have a different output when we map our data, in this video I want to start talking a little bit about some of the more uh, versatile functions that we can call through Network X to analyze and start interrogating our data. And this is going to be particularly useful in DH projects that have large, large data samples. I'm talking 1,000, 10,000 plus, where mapping data out visually might be good for representing it uh, in one image, but it doesn't allow for you to easily interrogate such a large quantity of data. In order to do that more efficiently, you need to be kind of familiar with some of these important functions within Network X. And the one function, or actually three functions I'm going to talk about in this video, all deal with identifying uh, if something, if uh, uh, one person in your network has a path to another person, in other words, if they are connected. And also we're going to figure out how to calculate the shortest path between two individuals in the network. And then we're going to also look at a way to provide all paths uh, from a target within X number of degrees. So how far removed they are from uh, the individual. Let's go ahead and just run our script so we can kind of see the data that we've been working with. And it looks something like this. And I'm doing this right now to illustrate something that's very important. What I want you to realize is that Tom and Jeff are functioning independently of Lily, Jill, Jerry, Sarah, and Bob. Uh, these five individuals down here are all connected in some capacity. That's going to be very important as we go further. So let's jump right in. We are going to be using first the has path function. So we are going to print off nx dot has path. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a, a boolean, which is essentially a true or false statement. And we are curious if Tom has a path to Jeff. And this is the way in which we type it in uh, to the function. We pass all these arguments. We pass G for the, um, the graph that we're looking at, and Tom, which is known as the source, and Jeff, which is the target. So I'm going to just block this out for right now. So we're going to run this. And what it has returned is true. In fact, Tom and Jeff are connected. Great. So we know that there is a path between Tom and Jeff. What happens, however, if we type Tom and Lily? Well, that's going to return a false. And why is it returning a false? It's returning a false because when we actually map out our data, we see that uh, Tom and, uh, who did I pick, Lily, are not connected in any way, shape, or form. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what will happen if we correct that. Let's give Lily a connection to, instead of Tom, we're going to give him a connection to Jeff, because we know that Tom and Jeff are connected. Now what happens when we run that exact same uh, uh, script? We see that we have a true statement, and that's because Tom and Lily are now actually connected, and we can see just that happening in this graph. So that's how the has path function works. Pass an argument that's your graph, pass an argument that is your source, and pass an argument that is your target. And that's going to be very useful for if you want to uh, initiate some kind of a loop based on a condition that a path does actually exist. It'll be a quick way to kind of get away, uh, uh, remove the chance of returning an error uh, when you call other functions that might require a path, such as shortest path, which is what we're going to do right now. So we want to run shortest path. So I'm going to do print dot shortest underscore path, and we're going to uh, call it as a function. And what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, look for the same information. We want to see the shortest path between G. Let's stick with the first example of Tom and Jeff. And let's see what it puts. Let me close this. All right, let's run it. And what it's going to put out here is a list. So the shortest path between Tom and Jeff is in fact just simply going Tom to Jeff. How, what would happen if we change this to Lily? Because we know now that Tom and Lily actually have a path. 
Now it's going to return another list. And what it's going to do is if you can't see it here, I'll put it up here. It's going to say in order to get from Tom to Lily, you have to go Tom to Jeff from Jeff to Lily. Let's do something a little bit more complicated though. I'm going to look at this data in the map. Let's find somebody who's pretty far removed. Let's go from Tom to Sarah. What's going to happen is the output is going to show Tom, Jeff, Lily, Jill, Jerry, and Sarah. So let's do that. See what happens. And as we see, as we see down here, we see Tom, Jeff, Lily, Jill, Jerry, and Sarah, just as we predicted. So let me close these figures because they're kind of annoying. So that's how we work with shortest path. What would happen, however, if I remove this path from our data? So I'm going to remove the connection between Jilly and Jeff, save that. What would happen now if I tried to do that? Well, when I run this, I'm going to get an error. It's an exception right here. And if we look down here, the exception is that there is no path between Tom and Sarah. So this is going to be when, if you're running this kind of function in a loop, this would be a good time to use the uh, a conditional statement. So if nx dot path, on, let's do, I'll just show you right now. Nx dot, uh, dot has path uh, g tom lily. If these two have a path, then I want you to print off that path. And um, else print no path. So now let's see what happens. I'm going to comment that out. In fact, what's happened here is our conditional statement has worked. Uh, it has just simply told us no path. So this is how you can use that has, has path function bring it into a, um, a conditional, which is going to look to see if it's true or false. And if it's false, it's going to go down here to this else statement and do this. What if, however, let's go back here and add that relationship back in. Now that we know that they have a path, it's going to do this function because this is in fact true now. So that's how the has path function can kind of work with conditionals. And that's how the shortest path can actually work as well. I'm going to comment these out though. I want to speak about one other function before I end this video. And that is, and this is a long one, single uh, source shortest path. Yeah, that's a mouthful. So what we're going to do is we're going to print off nx dot single source, oh gosh, shortest path. I'm just going to cheat and do that. And we're going to do g because that's our graph. We're going to do tom, that's our source. And we want to see uh, all the individuals connected to tom at a certain distance. So let's just do one for right now. So what's happening here is it's telling us that there is uh, a connection between Tom and Tom, obviously. Uh, and there's also a connection between from Jeff to Tom. And the way in which you get from Jeff to Tom is by going through Jeff. All of this seems rather basic, but what this is doing is it's telling us in raw data, not in a network map, how individuals are connected by X degree, in this case, the degree of just one. And it's returning that data as a dictionary and a dictionary that consists of um, uh, a key that is returned as a list. And the reason why it's returning it as a list is because in not all instances, you're going to have one value. Uh, instead, you're going to have multiple values as we see here with Jeff and Tom. What if we want to have a degree of three? Well, we're going to get a much more complicated result. What it's going to do is it's going to tell us that uh, all the individuals who are connected to Tom by three degrees of separation and how they are connected. So let's go here to the to the furthest one. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to map this out as well so we can kind of see what's happening in our network map and here. So I'm going to paste this right here so we can kind of see that better. So what we see here is Jill, this last example. And Jill is connected to uh, Tom through uh, two intermediaries, through uh, two brokers. And this is going to be from Tom to Jeff, from Jeff to Lily, and then from Lily to uh, Jill. So that's how we get from Tom to Jill. Uh, what if we wanted to see how Tom is connected to Jerry? Well, in order to actually see that, we need to change our cutoff here from three to four degrees. And this will allow us to actually see how Tom is connected to Jerry. And we see that right here in the final uh, output of the dictionary. The fourth degree of separation is 
uh, Tom to Jeff, Jeff to Lily, Lily to Jill, and Jill to Jerry. This is very important. With a small data set with, what is it, five, six, seven individuals, this might not like, seem like that great of a function to really use. When you have a thousand individuals in a network, uh, I promise you, uh, identifying the shortest path can sometimes be a little cumbersome, even with uh, some of the tools that we have in Matplotlib. And in times like this, you're going to want to know how to calculate the shortest path in the raw data. And this is how you do it in Network X. I hope you've found this video somewhat useful. In the next video, we're going to start looking at how to engage with the data in a little bit more dynamic ways by creating a network map that will allow us to actually move the nodes in matplotlib. This is a bit more advanced, but it's something that you want to be able to do because it'll allow you to have a network map that functions a little bit more like Stanford's Palladio, which is something that a lot of people who work with social networks are kind of familiar with already. So we're going to do that in the next video. Thank you for listening.